happiness through curiosity on TRS clips honestly there is a change in the internet narrative where uh, a lot of young indians are feeling a lot of gratitude towards the sikh community yeah for the protection honestly that the sikh community has given the rest of india and for the sense of warriorship i don't know if i'm finding the right words honestly yeah. but i know that the emotion was conveyed but so, there is a narrative like this so i i must admit that you know i left as a very young man i'm going to give a personal angle to this sure. now because you just invoked a feeling right and a memory 84 happened i was here i was 11 and a half years old and i remember what happened in jhansi and what happened in punjab because i was actually in punjab during june and november i was this is when attack on golden temple and genocidal campaign which now indian courts have finally accepted including a delhi court i was very angry young man at 12 you remember everything i remember who protected us too you know i am here sitting here because not my next door neighbor but the guy said who lived this third house down bhagwan das because he took us into his house i would have been dead that day you know mob mentalities many things happen right i'm sorry i'm cutting you short feel free to like share the experience just so there's a lot of young listeners give them context so things happened in 84 there's a reaction from the government and the people I, i don't i'll share this part right so i am a younger young man and i have a perspective on what has happened i don't know what to do with it in fact for next 10 years you know when i left this country i said i'm never going to come back i could have been that guy who picks up the ak47 i mean that's the honest truth i was very angry as to what had happened at the same time when i came back here like i came back i think in 96 or 97 after going through my engineering and learning dealing with my own trauma i'm like you know what i'm 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 going to be in education i got to channelize this anger you know i have to deal with the conscience of what has happened of indian conscience because my friends are hindus too it's not about a hindu sikh thing that's the narrative which plays out it's not it really is a government thing and sikh dna thinks like that from guru nanak period onwards doesn't matter who's at the center or the power centers is what i mean and you know when i came back i'll just share that i had no reason to go back to jhansi i landed in delhi in 96 because i wanted to go study about ling- languages of guru granth sahib but i took the train i went to jhansi for a day to meet bhagwan das cuz i know i'm alive because of him i know what they did to him next day in the market people were not very happy with him that he protected us but that's a human issue right what i'm sharing with you is that it took me 10 plus years just to think about what to do with this you know you have to channelize your angers and then i realize look hatred is never the thing we talk about this but it's you go through your own journey of it i didn't hate india or hindus in fact sometimes people ask me you know do you hate india i'm like no how can i do that i don't think any sick can there's no such thing but you must understand what has happened and how there hasn't been a reparation there hasn't been a discourse on how to correct it and any psychologist will tell you even when you lose in a breakup in a bad breakup between you know even as a girlfriend boyfriend and if it's an ugly breakup a violent one you need help you know it must be addressed so that addressing kind of consciousness hasn't happened but sikh narrative believes in that sikh narrative is never about vengeance no guru Guru Granth Sahib doesn't even have the word badla. I know some Sikhs use it, but it's because they're angry. But Guru Granth Sahib's language has the word justice in it, naya. And that's why Sikhs are very big on it every time. Doesn't matter which country they live in, they'll become politically active because they read Bani and Bani says, connect with the divine, always fight for justice. In America, I'm, I'm just connecting the dot. You know, the, the f- 100 years ago in America, there's a sick man who goes all the way to supreme court three times us supreme court fighting to be recognized as a citizen of america bhagat singh thind is his name he was a soldier and a spiritualist who wrote books on things he went to represent america as a soldier and even there people said things you like no i should be a citizen how come only whites are allowed to vote so that's in the dna that dna comes from shabad guru granth sahib and it it asks us to fight for justice regardless of the circumstances 
And I like to say, justice is not just us. This is why Sikhs don't have an issue doing that for others. That's how we are trained. That's how we are trained. But when you're fighting your own battles and reparation hasn't happened internally, then, then you become small, so you talk about smaller things. And I think my community is going through some of that because that, that addressing, th there is a whole battle of trauma and memory and it is going on. I think it is addressing some of it, but it, it needs a larger conversation to be addressed. Would you like to have the larger conversation right now a little bit? Because this is a youth oriented show. Sure. And people are all yours, honestly. There are good and bad people in every faith. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I subscribe to that. Yeah. I'm the, interested in, you know, the worst of the people. Yeah. They also have a conscience, man. It's how we approach. In the right circumstances, in the right conversation, things can be powerful. Yeah. Uh, I'd actually like to know. And I don't think I've met a Sikh who's as uh, capable as you are in terms of speaking up for the community because of your understanding of the faith, of the history. And I know that you have knowledge about multiple subjects. It's also why I'm asking you that what is the word of the Sikh community right now? In terms of you're saying there's unaddressed things, I'd actually like to know what uh, you feel is unaddressed on a public platform like this. Sure. Sikh community, you know, the, we can't go back too far, but let's say since 47, there have been issues. There were promises made by Congress, all Indian National Congress, not the Congress party of today, which represented India. They never got fulfilled. People don't realize. I didn't know these things. Look, I grew up writing, you know, father of the nation essays, just like anyone else in this country. And it is my formative years in college when I'm dealing with my own learning and getting rid of my anger, but channelizing into, I realize what are the issues, you know? And there are actual unaddressed issues. Even yesterday, I'll be honest, you know, I was a new, sitting in a plane, I picked up a newspaper, scanning through it, and I'm looking, reading a column, Swami Onyx, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of it. It's calling for people like APS Gal and Bayad Singh to be brought back to Punjab. I'm like, seriously? Those were serious human rights violations from every angle. You'll, so, ha you'll have to give a little context here. Sure. I'm saying, so Punjab went through militancy period. And during militancy, there were several human rights con violations. They're unaddressed. National Human Rights Commission, national, not just Punjab, has so many cases pending as to what happened with the six in Punjab. The Rajya Sabha members are non sikh ones. I.K. Gujral's son has stood there in the parliament and said, how come we don't know more about June 84, the attack when it happened on the Darbar sub-complex? Six have been talking about it. Why is government not coming up and saying what really happened? So grievances have to do with, you know, Punjab issues, riparian water issues. Um, they show up in the news with a very different tint, but they are pending. There's whole 84 things when attack happened. Sure, there are people who disagreed with it, but you know, one is a state's responsibility. So is, is the community expecting a, an official apology from the government? There have been apologies, but I have my own take and community has never accepted them, by the way, because they are... <sighs> you Google today, what is a genuine apology? That has never happened. There, there are issues. There are people on national political scene even today who have been cited by non six as directing the violence. Again, we are not saying, Suli pe chadado. We're saying, come on, you know, it's on your face right now. And this is from a community, you know, who has been called Gaddar so many times, you know. Dude, <laughs> we, six have done everything for yeah, India. Six we, don't we, hate India. This is a wrong India. narrative. We wouldn't have India if it wasn't for six, honestly. Be, uh, you know who said that? A Muslim writer has written that, not even a Hindu writer. His name is Allah Yar Khan Jogi. I want to give you the direct line. I went to locate him, his descendants in Lahore. He wrote that. He wrote it in the context of because Guru Gobind Singh fought with the atrocities of some Muslims who were converting India forcefully, right? 
So this is not anti-Muslim sentiment because a Muslim guy wrote himself. He and he in praise of Guru Gobind Singh and he writes that Agar na hote Gobind Singh sunnat hoti sabki. It's Allah Yar Khan Jogi writing it in a, on a long poem called Shahidane Wafa. So you know what we have done is we have made it about Hindu Muslim or a Mughal or a Hindu Hill Chief Rajas. It's nothing like that. That's when you create an oversimplification because you don't want to deal with issues. So it's called diversions, right? I mean, and kindergarten teachers do this all the time. When you don't want to engage with something, you divert their attention towards something else. That's what we keep doing. So Sikh community has legitimate grievances. In fact, Ambassador Casey Singh, uh, though you know people may know him, he's a former ambassador. He wrote a column on this. He's like, Indian External Affairs Ministry keeps saying Khalistan word on certain conversation. Diaspora Sikhs are doing this. Okay, they're doing whatever they're doing. What have we done to repair? That's the question at a state level, right? There always will be varieties of opinion on everything. What I do wish to say is that I know 200% that at least people my age and younger and maybe a little older as well. I'm 93 born. So I would go up to like people born in the 80s and 90s. There's a very deep sense of gratitude towards the Sikh community. Yeah. Especially when you talk about urban centers. Yeah. I can't speak for small town India because I'm not from small town India. No, there is. There is I, that's where our conversation started. I actually saw that in the last two years more. If I may say this, I'm a very avid reader and uh, I observe a lot. I, I read a lot. I watch a lot, even the things I don't like because you know you have to see where the conversations are taking place. I can tell you, Nothing Sikh community did as a PR or as a work with the government changed the image of the Sikhs since 84. Nothing did. And you, I don't know if you know, the government in 84 had hired a company to do a negative campaign on Sikhs globally. It's called Rediffusion, which became Rediff Mail eventually. Yes, it was from Bombay. I'm very aware of it. I have those documents which I have seen. As in the same company became Rediff. Yeah, Rediff Mill eventually. Like Rediff.com. Yeah, but it was just to be rediffusion. That level of campaign was run against the six. Okay. Six have been trying, right? In multiple ways. Nothing was working. You know what changed? No Sikh political party did anything. No Sikh organization did anything. The individual response in last two years, average Indian thinks that no Sikh is okay. There was no leadership in farmers' protests and stuff, right? Take the politics aside for I'm just talking about image. Actually, image in India changed for the first time since 84 because what India saw on average Sikh. And the Indians said, whatever the politics might be, that aside. So, and that's the Sikh story, by the way. That's why I'm mentioning it. Sikhs never used to talk about what they do and who they are. We just did it. Others talked about it. That's part of the humility culture which was presented from Guru Nanak onward. No, we're not going to talk about our own story. What do you think about the narrative now as a Sikh? I have trouble with it. I have trouble with the narrative from the Sikh community. Now we tell the world who Sikhs are. That's why if you notice when you ask me, I try to go back to the Gurus or the Gurbani. Our job is to become a lover. A warrior who's a lover as well, right? Just to call us warriors is very problematic. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> One of the most famous images of Sikhs in the post-Guru period is Baba Deep Singh. A headless warrior fighting to defend Golden Temple Complex. Now, what people don't know, he did that at the age of 82. From 24 to 82, he's a scholar. At the age of 24, he comes to meet Guru Gobind Singh. He gets trained by him. He becomes a scribe. He's interpreting the text. He becomes not just the primary text, but the secondary text. But he's equally prepared to fight and the world had never seen a scholar can fight like this. But look what Sikh narrative has done. They have made him just a, fight, a warrior. No, we are not warriors. We are poets, we are lovers who can also fight. So the Sikh narrative really is, I don't decide what I will do. This is based out of Gurbani, right? Guru Granth Sahib. Uh, my work is, I should, <laughs> this is a, there's a professor, Puran Singh writer, he writes this in English, so I'll just quote him. He says, 
you know, when I was not in love, I thought I was in love with the divine. I was very active. But now I've actually gone deeper in myself. What I realize is I don't get to decide how to serve the community. I need to be prepared to play the reed flute or to pick up the sword, whatever is needed. That's the Sikh narrative. And Sikhs did this. Our ragi would fight. People hadn't seen that. The musicians will fight. Our scholars used to fight because the world hadn't seen it. And they're like, how is this possible? Because we were inspired by that Shabbat, that Gyan Khadag. Gyan and Khadag are not separate things for Sikhs. In our DNA from Guru Nanak onwards, they're together. And when Sikhs are separating it themselves, you'll see that's why there is a disharmony within the community as well. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to TRS Clips for more.